It's now uh, my distinct pleasure to introduce to you your keynote speaker, your closing keynote speaker, who taught art for 13 years, and now he speaks to teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Hunnicutt. Or as I've taken to calling him, Sir Kevin Hunnicutt. <laughs> Thank you. Yay! Can you hear me okay? Um, it's great to be here. I'm excited. Um, um, and I'm just going to tell you my story, okay? I'm a teacher. Uh, I was an art teacher for 13 years. I was the only art teacher in my town. So um, when we broke into curriculum meetings, I met with myself. And that was funny the first year. But after 13 years, I started feeling like a detached retina, you know? I mean, come on, who do I collaborate with? I burned out. It happens, you know? Before social media, before Twitter, I was all alone. I'm in love with social media. I'm in love with the macro mind. Me connected to you guys, you know what I mean? And I don't have time to talk to everyone all the time, but when I need something, people have my back on behalf of the kids I represent, you know what I mean? Who wouldn't do that? Now your kids are out there, they're playing on digital playgrounds, largely without recess attendance. So when people say, I don't want to do that, come on, you're in education, you don't get to stop. You don't get to choose when to stop. Long as you're teaching, you've got to be learning. And by the way, that's good. It's healthy. How many of you know a teacher who retired and a year later was dead? They stopped doing. You've got to do things. You've got to stay alive and vibrant. And I love it when a teacher has a renaissance with two years left on her contract. Two years until retirement, she has a renaissance. You ever seen this? They become a learner again. They're all excited. Oh, it's my goal in every workshop to see that happen. I had a lady walk up to me at, at the end and she's crying and she said, I'm two years to retirement. I was going to forget all of this and now I know I must do it. And she hugs me and she's crying. She happened. She happened, you know? So we got to anoint each other. You guys are here. There are people who aren't here. And you guys get in trouble. I know you do. You get indicted. You ever get the indictment? It must be nice to have the time. <laughs> That's what they're saying. They're saying, you're busy playing with technology while I'm doing important teacher things. You know what I mean? By the way, administrators in the room, you've got to support your innovators. You've got to. When Americans went west, right, the scouts went first. And they looked for opportunities and dangers and they came back and told the wagon train, we need scouts, that's you crazies. We love you and we fear you because we've never officially anointed you. I want every administrator to pick their team and call them something. The Magnificent Seven. Get them t-shirts. They're not going to get money. They might as well get a t-shirt. <laughs> And tell everyone to thank them, don't spank them. You're the petri dishes. You're where innovation happens, and largely without permission. Doggone it, give you a badge. And I want to tell IT, look, keep the machines going. These people get to make choices. Anything goes wrong, it's on them, not on you. Chillax, okay? I got beat up. I died of domestic violence in education. They say most good school innovation dies of domestic violence. You know what I mean. How dare you? How dare your piece of grass grow too tall? We'll mow it down. We can't do that, you know? I'm looking out at some of you and you're lifting me with your eyes right now. You're feeding me with your eyes. You're willing me to succeed. That's beautiful. There are people who come to workshops just to outknow you. <laughs> You've gone to these workshops by your fellow teachers and practitioners and what I would tell you guys is love them. They're scared. They're standing up there scared and they're giving back. Love them. Create that circumstance in classrooms too. Reach out and help each other. I know we're all weird and we're all broken. That's why we teach, right? We love kids. This is a story of me. That's me in 1966. My high school kids see this and they say, cool, civil war. <laughs> Just because it's black and white, they think it's a civil war. That's a Polaroid land camera. Remember that camera? It didn't come out by itself. You had to pull it out. And for some reason, you thought doing this made it work faster. I was a kid who went to school in 20 different states growing up. People say, oh, military brat. No, I was the son of an alcoholic outlaw. My dad broke the law a lot. When he did, we moved. We moved fast. Dad called it the midnight run. So I'm in your class for a week. I like what you're teaching. I come home and dad says midnight run and I know what that means. We all get one trash bag in the Honeycutt family. That's our luggage. We throw it in the truck and we're gone. We can tell no one where we're going or they'll find dad. 
So that's my childhood. I'm not complaining, actually. Everything I am came from that. My ability to do dialects. I moved so much, I never got a dialect. I chameleonize any dialect that I hear. I don't even mean to. I found out that it's best to be English when you're shopping for shoes. I don't know why, but they think you have standards. So last time I was buying shoes, I said, do you have these in a size eight and a half? And she said, oh my God, you're from London. I'm from London. I said, oh crap. My wife said, you're on your own. She said, I haven't been back in years. Tell me all the news. I said, I'm going to go to the loo. And when I get back, we'll have a bit of a chat. <laughs> and I ran. <laughs> I moved to Tennessee. I moved to Tennessee. I was a kid and I moved to Tennessee. And in Tennessee, it's a whole different world in Tennessee. Turns out lots of things are different in Tennessee. All right? They called me the smart Yankee in Tennessee. That Yankee boy is smart. Two syllables, smart. I you get a second syllable in there. I don't know how you do that. I was two grade levels ahead of everybody. All I did was move there. <laughs> So I'm going to school in this mountain town, Tennessee, and people say things like, boy, you better watch it, you ain't from here. People disappear around here. So I, mean, I kept a low profile, except in history class. I love history, and they taught the Civil War different. <laughs> they called it something different. They called it the War of Northern Aggression. I'd never heard that. And the teacher made it sound like the whole thing ended in a draw. I had to challenge that. I raised my Yankee hand. He called on me, Yankee boy. I said, you guys are aware the South lost the war, right? Oh, it was quiet. I could hear a cricket in the corner going, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. And some boy in the front row muttered, that Yankee boy's gonna die. So I was very glad to move again to Pennsylvania where I was promptly two grade levels behind. I'm in special classes now. <laughs> all I did was move, you know? But all of this moving and abuse and foster homes and things that were my childhood, you could, you could make excuses for why I can fail. You can get down in my problem with me. Don't kick my butt with love and expectation. Do that, okay? You love a kid, kick their butt with love. And some of you got gray in your hair and you've been doing this a long time. And I bet you you've gotten phone calls from those kids when they're 30. Hey, I just want to say thanks. Uh, you're, the, you're the only one that held me accountable back then. I'm still in prison, but when I get out... <laughs> I get those calls. <laughs> This is me, that's my brother. For years I thought my brother was the Antichrist. <laughs> my brother was evil. He beat me up every day. One day he forgot to beat me up. He said, have I hit you yet today? I said, I don't think so. <laughs> my brother's a preacher now. I can't get even, right? You don't choose your family. And uh, shopping for clothes at my house meant a visit to this, not the Goodwill store, the Goodwill box. We shopped from the box. Dad called it the factory outlet store. <laughs> We'd pull up to the box at midnight on a school night and he'd put me inside. That thing opens up, you can get in the fetal position. He drops me inside and I'm inside handing out bags of clothes as fast as I can. That's school clothes shopping night, the Honeycut trailer, right? And you got what was ever in that box that night, that's it. And I was so scared the police would come. I always knew they were gonna come. One night it happened, New Oxford, Pennsylvania. It's, okay, I'm inside the box, I'm handing out clothes and I hear, there's a blue GOC pickup parked outside of Alco next to the Goodwill box. Roger that. I'm gonna run that plate. Roger. My dad just took off. There's nothing quite as lonely as third gear in a GMC from the inside of the Goodwill box. It's a school night. I gotta learn tomorrow. I'm gonna be in your class tomorrow. You don't even know where I came from. You know? So what's that going to be like? How will you interface with me? You know what I mean? Ah, schools can be benevolent or they can be evil. Teaching is non-invasive brain surgery. Wear that for a minute. The brain allows itself to be physiologically changed by experience. Life is a scalpel. The classroom is a scalpel. Do no harm. Do no harm. Because how you feel when you learn matters. Hmm? Forever, it's called associative learning. How you feel while you're learning will always be associated. You can scaffold around it, but you can't change it, right? So at least the kids shouldn't feel stupid. 
you know? And if we can do things about that, will you create new ways for me to show I'm smart? Are you that kind of teacher? Or are you going to say that's cheating? I hear people say that. Speech to text app, right? On the iPad. How many kids do you know that are great talkers and terrible writers? Raise your hand if you know some kids like that. Yeah, they compensate, right? But if they can speech to text, right? And once they have a paragraph, they're not facing a blank page, you can start. Unless you call it cheating. Your colleagues are going to call it cheating. You better know what you're going to say. I like my GPS. Who has a GPS? Mine saved my marriage. <laughs> She doesn't judge me, right? You miss your turn, she makes it sound fine. Recalculating. <laughs> she does not judge me. You pull up to your destiny, arriving at destination, on right. I'm a rock star. This thing is the part of my brain God forgot to give me. Here it is. <laughs> People say, well, that's cheating. Well, that's just cheating. It's what that's just some cheating. Come on, man. How many of you, if you lost your cell phone or your laptop, you would lose important information? How many of you were nervous when I said this? <laughs> then what have you done? You have outsourced the warehousing of data to a peripheral device. You have created for yourself digital limbs. Want to test that? If I amputate your digital limbs, will you feel ghost pain? <laughs> Some of you are nervous right now. Now I know this about the brain, it doesn't waste space. Right? If you're not using that to warehouse phone numbers, how many phone numbers do you know now? I press wife and it calls my wife. I don't even know her number. Right? <laughs> the brain uses the neocortex. It repurposes. It's not wasting anything. People worry so much about what we're not doing. What if there's like, a, I don't know, a cataclysm and when we can't use cell phones? Will our kids be crippled? Come on, humans figure things out. When did you learn to drive in bad weather? Some bad weather happened and you drove in it. We're designed to be that, right? You don't have to be so, I think, uptight about these things. You can only dream as big as your personal experience. And you're dealing with kids that come from... See, my biggest dream was to one day live in a double wide trailer. Twice as wide as a normal trailer with skirting. If you're not from the trailer park, you don't know what I mean. With the rich people in trailer park got skirting and it matches the house. They have chocolate at Halloween. That's why you need to know this, right? The house I really live in would look a little bit different, but that's my house right there. A mobile home is not mobile once the tires go flat. <laughs> Unless there's a tornado. <laughs> then they're mobile again. <laughs> it's hard to live in a dwelling that's third less safe to a ditch or low-lying area, you know? My biggest fear, well, it wasn't tornadoes. That was second. It was my dad. There he is right there. That's not my dad. They like that slide in New Zealand, though. <laughs> my job in second grade was to hide dad's guns when he came home drunk. And he knew I knew where they were. So that's going on there. I'm emotionally compromised. If you make me come through the same front door of learning with all the other kids, I'm going to fail you. Not on purpose. It's not ego. It's not work ethic. I read it three times. I don't understand. Now I've got to come to school and admit I'm stupid or pretend I don't care. I love the teachers that let me do it different. Oh my gosh, I love them. You know, they bent the rules a little bit. They found another way for me to be smart. I work twice as hard as the other kids my way, but if I can only do it this way, it's an indictment. You're saying I'm stupid, you know what I mean? Can I record myself and do 20 takes so the class hears me talk on my 20th take? You're gonna make me read in front of the room? And they're gonna be nice in here because it's your room, but I'm gonna go out in the hall. They're not gonna be nice out there. Getting me to read in front of everybody is not good for me. Let me wear headphones and practice over there. Be that benevolent. Oh, by the way, flip your classroom so I can rewind you. I didn't get it the first time. I'm sorry. And I'm not going to raise my hand and tell you. You ever see kids like that? You understand? And you know they didn't, but they won't. Come on, there's kids around. You're not going to do that. But if I can go home on my Android phone and I can rewind you at the dinner table, I can see integers three, four, five, six times. I'll do that. I don't want to be stupid. I love you people that are flipping your classrooms. And you don't have to wait till you're good at it. You'll never do it. Just do it. Just do it. Look, everywhere I go, I point the camera at me and I talk to kids. I teach. I teach kids to change tire on a car. I try to teach my son how to change tire on his truck. He said to me, I'm not interested. I said, really? So you'll be standing beside the road with your girlfriend waiting for a man to arrive. <laughs> He became interested. 
to that video, anybody that watches it can learn how to change a tie. I don't want your 16-year-old daughter standing by the side of the highway hoping someone nice shows up. That's a simple million-dollar video. What can you teach? And will, when will you teach it to your phone or your iPad? Because you're not talking to a phone or an iPad. You're talking to everyone that will ever watch that video. You're talking to the future. We're the first generation of humans that can do that. You look at photographs, they're cool, but it's a frozen moment of time and you don't know much. Grandma can teach her great-great-grandkids. Great-great-grandma was funny. We can send ourselves through time. Our kids are doing it, with or without us. Raise your hand if you made a mistake in puberty. Anyone? I love California because people raise their hand. I go some places and no one made a mistake at all, you know? You raise your hand, you own it, right? Our mistakes were not Googleable. The only way to find out was to find my old friends, and if they tell, I'll tell, policy of mutual destruction. <laughs> but our kids are on the record. Every tweet is Googleable. They're building a digital legacy with or without us. We've got to guide them. We've got to lead. We've got to be in there. And I'm sorry it's exhausting. I know it's exhausting. I'm tired too, and I'm not a natural with any of this. I'm a creative technology user. The truth is, raise your hand if you're an uber geek. You're really good with technology. Raise your hand. If I live here, you will be my friends because I'm going to buy you beer and steak until you like me because I need your help. I'm, I'm, I'm creative, but I don't know a lot of stuff, right? So I usually have a fifth grader do it for me. I'm a, I'm a 12 o'clock flasher. Sounds bad. Every, every, everything at my house is flashing 12 at home because I can't program it. What were you thinking? I don't even want to know what you think. <laughs> stuff happens, man. I gotta thank these people. This is Mary Lou Burgoon. She had sideburns thicker than my father's. She let me stand right here, right here, in the shadow of her ample bosom, out of the rain. Even, even if I might have lice. So week before last, uh, my wife, her whole class was out for lice. All of them but one. You probably don't have lice in California. You know, once the lice starts, it just keeps going, man. It just keeps going because there's one family that doesn't treat, comes back, reinfestation. So every time I go home, I got to check my wife for lice. I don't check her for ticks. I check her for lice. I got her in the hallway and we're looking and she's always, you know how as soon as I say lice, some of you start scratching your head, you know? But she hugs them all anyway. She risks lice daily because she loves them. She may be the only hug they got, you know? She does that, man. She's got some tough kids. She says, I'm going to find a way to love this one. That's how she got me. That's how she saved me. You know what I mean? I was re her rehearsal for those tough, emotionally, behavioral disordered children. <laughs> she practiced on me. This, this next lady is uh, the secretary at Hawthorne Elementary, 1979. She used to send me these little notes every day. This is not technology. This is oriental trading. I'm the only kid that got mail every day from a teacher. She fed me under the table. You know what I mean? Because if you ask the wrong question, we move. Counselor gets too close, we move. She knew that, and she fed me these, man. And they smelled like her. And she smelled good. She smelled what I call classy. She smelled classy. So my dad come home at 2 in the morning, he's cussing, calling me a loser, I'm never going to be anything. I go to my room and get out the shoebox with these. She believed, and I believe her. See, it was these teachers, these crazy teachers. And it was always the crazy ones. The three-fingered shop teacher talking about bandsaw safety. <laughs> He's a character, man. See, in his room, I remember everything because that man is a story. There's other teachers, the wonk, 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 wonk ones. Come on, how many hours do you not even remember? You know you were there, but you don't remember anything that happened. Wonk, 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 wonk. Did you learn it if you don't remember it? So what was done to you there? Education was done to you, not with you, to you, right? And you're sitting in there, but it's the crazy ones, man. They were a story. The chemistry teacher, where's the chemistry teachers in the room? People are nuts, man. My chemistry teacher pulls out lithium, lithium. And he goes, this is a very unstable element. You can't keep it. And it starts dripping fire. <laughs> and there's a little fire everywhere it drips. It's this acrid smoke. And we're all going, we're going to die. <laughs> This man did it every year. I didn't know. It's what he did, man. But we were leaning forward in that class. We were leaning forward, right? Leaning forward and being in the front row is kind of a big deal. We have in our schools, right, what's called the custodial arrangement of learning, designed to let custodians get brooms between chairs. It was never designed for optimal learning. It's an accident. 
a piece of legacy code we live with. And we know some things about this. You front row people, research calls you policy makers. You're doing okay on the test, you usually know the answer during the lecture. You people in the back, hello my people, that's my people. <laughs> and they call you bystanders. Watch test scores drop off precipitously as you walk toward the deep end of the learning pool. We know this. Okay, I know this. So back in 19, when my dad died in 1982. He drowned in a drinking accident at the lake. I was supposed to be watching him that night. And he was mean that night. So I just went home and he drowned. And that was my fault. That's how I felt anyway for a very long time. I finally forgave myself, you know. It took a while. I'm in the back of the room right after he died. And I'm hitting my head against the wall. I'm flunking everything. I don't care. I hit my head just right though. My brain hit the side of, the, of my cranium and I had a vision of my own future. I saw myself in that single wide trailer without skirting. My wife was on the couch. She says, "Hun, get my scratching stick. And I said, no. This is not going to be my life. I choose something else. And I don't know how I knew it, but I knew this was the wrong place to be. So I moved to the front row and my life changed here. Everything changed because they asked these kids more questions and it's embarrassing not to know answers. And then I cracked the code of learning. You will not believe how easy this is. <laughs> Guess what? The next right answer in the lecture is always the next dark black word in the book. <laughs> Someone should tell you that, you know? It was working every time. So it was my turn. I decided to take a shot, man. I'm in the front row. Mr. Parker's talking about the, uh, he's talking about neurophysiology, and he says, the action potential across the synapse, gone down the dendrites, across the cell body or soma, down the axon via the myelin sheaths, and to the terminal bulbs. What happens next in the process? I'm scared, man. I got my fingers on the dark black words. I raise my hand. He said, honeycut? Incredulous, right? Honeycut? I said, um, excitatory or inhibitory neurotransmitters are then released into the synapse. He said, Honeycutt. <laughs> he gave me one of them. <laughs> it hit me like crack cocaine. <laughs> You ever, you, you ever be so proud for a second you're goofy? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I just knew some stuff just now. God, it felt good. I wanted to feel it again, right? So I came to school early and I looked at the dark black words. I memorized them. I could do it without looking. My grades for the next three years were all A's and one B. I wasn't stupid. I was in the wrong seat, you know what I mean? I had to be brought forward somehow. Mr. Parker was not a dynamic teacher. His toupee used to flap at us at track practice. <laughs> but he loved us, you know? He loved us. I hear teachers say things like, I don't like those laptops. I say, why? I don't know what the kids back there are doing. Get up! Walk around. Retire if you've come to like the chair that much. <laughs> Pivotal moment happens for every teacher. When you start to like the chair, you get a nice one. You sit down and go, oh God, that's nice. <laughs> then you flirt with this idea of having them come to you. You know what I mean? Now they come to you. Who's important now? They got to come to you, right? And then they ever come up and ask the same question three times and you indict them accidentally with an exhalation? <sighs> Kevin, oh baby, I'm done. I won't be up here again. Sorry I wasted your time. We don't mean to do that, but we do that sometimes, right? If you could say, hey, I want you to watch episode three of Mass Snacks. I made it last night. It's on integers. I know you missed yesterday. Put on headphones. I'll talk to you in a minute. Thank you, man. You know what I mean? That's a benevolent act, right? You don't mean to, but you're surrounded, man. When you're up to your alligators, when you're up to your butt in alligators, there's no time to drain the swamp. I understand you don't have time. But if you could replicate yourself, team teach with you, <laughs> why wouldn't you try that, you know? So these teachers get mad and I say, man, I don't think about technology that way, man. I gotta make sure my kids can do things. I wanna make sure that they can learn right now, right this minute. How many of you ever got diagnosed with a medical condition you did not understand and by that night, you were an expert on it? Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, so you can learn. You know how to learn. That's the biggest thing we gotta teach kids. The contents, okay, contents, cool. How do I teach you to find it without me? Teach you to fish. Don't give you a fish. Teach you how to learn. That's my favorite thing to do with kids. Especially when they're giving me the pee in the pool look like some of you are right now. You ever see a kid swimming suddenly you can tell they're peeing in the pool? 
I was in the hotel pool yesterday. As some of you were doing that. I seen it. You know. Then you shake it off. <laughs> it's all warm through here, you know. <laughs> I got to change gears. I got to do something different. So I say, get out that device. I want you to know everything about this. You got five minutes. Go. Post your research on the Google Doc and cite your sources. Oh, I mess with kids too, man. As soon as they put that thing on there and don't cite their source, it's gone. My thing just disappeared. You didn't cite your source. Are you serious? My thing disappeared and I did cite a source. MTV.com does not impress me. <laughs> I've got to teach them some of this stuff. And I'm watching in real time, see? I tell those teachers, man, the back row is a front row if you're doing something that matters. The back row is a front row if it's engaging. Worksheets on a laptop is evolutionary steps sideways. Come on. You got the most powerful learning tools in human history. It's like the web and technology prepares a buffet of learning choices and we're eating the napkins. <laughs> Come on, man. You know, we got new spices. We don't have to make ha we don't have to make meatloaf anymore. You can do different things, right? So I'm looking at these tools. And if you're one of those people that's always looking for tools, that's powerful. You ever have two siblings, students, one's an A student, one's flunking? You ever have that? You ever wonder why when they have the same cognitive ability? Here's my theory, not burdened by research. Ready? <laughs> why should I try? She's already the best at everything. But what if I show you something none of you have seen? You get a chance to be best at it. What if I show you a week early? What if I say, can you help me? I want to use this, this Google SketchUp thing, man, but I'm old. Can you figure it out and help me show the class? I said, next week, man, you are in the front. You are the expert. They see you that way, you see you that way. Mom and dad want you tested for gifted now. See how quick that happens? <laughs> I'm like, sweetheart, she's walking upright. Thank me, okay? Come on. <laughs> it happens quick. My kids tend to look like this. I don't know he's not the next Steve Jobs. How do I know he's not brilliant? Because he's not like everybody else. That's what I love about all this technology. See, because special needs, I don't know. I think you can do good things there because they don't know what they can't do yet. With these new tools, new rules, right? This new instrument was invented. Ion makes this guitar for $29 on Amazon. Pop your iPad in. You can play all your chords right here. This is a MIDI interface. Never been played in the world before. Your kids can be first. You can play drums on this, piano on this. This is, this is a new thing in the universe. Got amniotic fluid dripping off of it. <laughs> you can hand that to the kid and let him rock, right? What else we got? We can change lives with this stuff. We can let kids be amazing if we want to. By the way, they need to create. They need to make. They need to do. The highest level of Bloom's Revised is create, right? We give that short shrift. We cut art programs. We cut theater programs. What are we doing? As a country, we're this amazing, inventive, crazy people. That's why we do so well. And then we started down that road. Standardized testing. No child left behind. No child left untested. We gave away some of our birthright here. We're these crazy people that do things. We make things. We don't know we can't. That's what invention is. Invention is to have an idea no one agrees with. That's what invention is. So where is that allowed to happen in school? What class is that? How do we get that? How do we do that? Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Einstein, Edison, what do their, what do their biographies say about their school experience? Okay, but those four survived. How many didn't? Dang it, can we make a little room? A lot of times my innovators, they come from the at-risk programs. I teach part-time in juvenile detention, pre-trial lockup, juvie. Do this sometime. Anybody, anybody do this? You know that feeling in your stomach when you go in, that first time, you badge in. Two sets of doors. And you're in. It's juvie. It's just like staff development. bunch of people don't want to be there and one of them may shank you. <laughs> it's the same gig. But it's all about relationships, making that five minute friend, declaring them brilliant, cleaning their slate, pretending you don't know. You ever treat the scariest kid in the room like the only one you trust? Isn't that a fun way to go? A little bit dangerous. I had a big kid, Bill. He poops bigger than I am. Big. He had a reputation too, big reputation. I said, Bill, man, this is a tough room. You got my back. Come again. I said, you got my back. He said, yeah. 
<laughs> he helps me very loud. Shut up! <laughs> Honeycutt's trying to teach. <laughs> it's all you, Mr. H. <laughs> that boy's my disciple. It's my disciple. I got three years to make it right, and I never give up on the kid. It's hard to teach the ones who bite, you know? You try to help them, they snarl. I think I made a woman pee one time when I did that. It's a snarl. It's hard, man. You gotta get Teflon gloves, Teflon heart, right? It's hard because you're paying for sins, but you didn't even commit. I love you for that, man. I love you ones that love them all, ones with lice. <laughs> I had a teacher one time. She almost hugged me, but then she saw me and knew how I was. See, she had her arm around this cute little girl, and she went like this. And then she looked down, and she pulled her hand back. And I know I had long hair, probably looked like I had lice, high water pants, but I'm not touchable. You think I want anything from you? Me a done. Janitor likes me. He's got a lot of keys. He must be important, you know? The lunch lady with a pus wart you can see through. She hugs me. At least I'm touchable by her. See, I care more about relationships and how we make kids feel than I do all these other little things. I'm looking, do I have, t am I at 10 minutes? Where am I at? Ten, am I, do I have 10? Okay, I wanna bring this thing. I got a million slides. Look where I'm skipping here, y'all. One of, one of my favorite researchers, Rodolfo Alinas, who knows who he is? He's a neuroscientist and a researcher and he discovers some really cool things. can react to their environment as they move through their environment. They have motricity, the ability to move. So when they're first born, they're moving around looking for a good place to plant themselves. The minute they plant themselves, they begin to digest their brain. Think about that in a teaching career. <laughs> I'm just saying, you get in that job, it gets comfortable. You stop learning, 30 years trot on by. Want to change the world with me tonight? Want to create a revolution? Let's break into every classroom and burn every file cabinet. Yeah. Purge the legacy code. Purge the legacy code. There's going to be a rage of arson now and I'm going to be in jail. <laughs> So if our kids are this, sitting and waiting to know, they look like this. Our kids need to look like this. I drew these two things on my iPad with my finger. I'm an art teacher that can draw on the iPad. Michelangelo would have loved him some iPad. <laughs> See, I have an art teacher friend. He wouldn't use the iPad in his class. He said, that's, that's a consumption device. I said, if you teach him it is, it is. So I drew a picture of Steve Jobs. You can find my YouTube video of me doing it. It's pretty good. I sent it to him and said, what do you got? <laughs> well, now he's doing the iPad, right? I had to challenge him. I shot one over his deck just a little bit, and he's back in the game again. We got to use these things. Um, when I was a little kid, I was a, a guitar player. I started to play guitar. I begged for a guitar. Poor kids don't get guitars. So in 1980, my dad found a guitar at a yard sale for $1 with no strings attached. <laughs> It had no strings attached. So I got air guitar, right? And I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited because uh, I, 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 I've been waiting my whole life to play the guitar. And at Christmas, I got strings. And the old man next door tuned it. So I got a loaded weapon now. Tuned the guitar and no idea how to play it. So I'm kind of stuck, man. So I just hit it and do stuff. And I find this place right here on the second, second string and the second fret. And I start hitting that. And I slide it. It sounded cool, kind of like rock and roll or something, so I entered a talent show. <laughs> That's all I could do. I thought I was going to win. 1,700 kids in the audience, junior high. It's my turn. I walk out, start my song. Kids are cool at first. They're like, nice start. <laughs> they don't know that's all I'm going to do, you know? The booing started about 20 seconds in. The throwing things at the stage started about 45 seconds in. And at a minute, they came and got me for my own protection. <laughs> and I cried, and I went home and I cried. I said, man, I'm never going to play guitar again. Never, never. But I couldn't give it up. I'm from the trailer park. I have to learn Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> I look at Stairway to Heaven in the music store, but the music might as well be Sanskrit, you know, cuneiform. 
I was never in a school long enough to learn how to read the music. But then I noticed above the music there were these little grids that looked like this. One, two, three, and six across. And I recognized that's the frets. And then they got circles. One, two, three. That's your fingers. I cracked the code. But I can't afford the music. So I brought my guitar to the alley between the lumber yard and the music store. And I practiced one chord at a time. Stairway to heaven. I started up. Ran back out to the alley. Third chord. Went back in. The guy said, freeze! Get out of here. I said, why? You're stealing our music. I said, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're memorizing. <laughs> I was kicked out for thought lifting. <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. I went home, taught myself. It took a long time. My kid comes along, gets a guitar. He's got YouTube. He's got YouTube. He didn't want me to teach him. I said, he said, Dad, it's not personal, but I can rewind this guy as many times as I want. He doesn't know how many times it took me to figure it out. I get it. I'm learning from people on YouTube now, too. You know? It's an exciting time, man. You can learn anything you want. You've got to open that up. But demand something. Show me something. Hand it in. You know? How many of you know kids are doing 20 things, but they never finish anything? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. So I want them to finish. Close the deal, right? Hand it in. Publish. Publish. My son is a writer. He's a good writer. But for years, he never published anything. I said, why don't you publish somewhere online? Someone will steal my work. I said, you should be so lucky. <laughs> I said, it's publish. It's copyrighted. As soon as you publish it, it's okay. Publish it. So he puts it online. His essay is online. And there's a comment like in two seconds. Here's the comment. Ready? What, what are you in second grade? Learn to spell. My kid was mad. He's like, Dad, look at this jerk. I will never be judged for my spelling again, but for the quality of my writing. <laughs> I'm so glad I left that comment, you know? <laughs> He's a writer now. He's a writer now. Cool. I want to bring up... I want to bring up, I put together a band when I go to conferences. I find people that, that want to do things with me. I'm in love with these devices. I'm in love with what I can do with GarageBand. I'm in love with writing songs in an airport terminal and playing guitar on the plane. We have all these new things we can cook with, right? And I can give them to kids and let them rock. Real musicians can rock these. Non-musicians can rock these. They're a soft landing for people. See, playing guitar is hard. A lot of kids quit over the years. I've been teaching guitar for 20 years. I'm not good. I'm free, so I'm worth every penny. <laughs> but I'll get your daughter started with E, A, and B7, and we can play thousands of songs with those three chords, but most kids quit, and they quit almost always the same place, at blisters. Most kids aren't braver than blisters. That's the barrier. Once you get past blisters, you got calluses, you're good to go, right? So are there cognitive blisters that we can't see? I can see your daughter's blisters and I can buy light gauge strings and I can set the action low and I can understand. But if I can't see your blisters, maybe I'll blame you for your problem. You know, we do this sometimes. We indict kids for their situation. Would we do this in the emergency room? You broke your leg, why don't you sit down and think about what you did? <laughs> fix, fix the leg, man, you know? Fix the leg. I want to put together my band, they're called Tweetwood Mac and I got some people in the audience that are going to help me out. Where's my drummer from last night? Where you at, drummer from last night? My man, where's my man at? JR, come on down here, JR. Give him a round of applause. We're going to play you out. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have you on drums up here. Now, my man auditioned last night in karaoke, and by the way, he's got like off the hook insane skills. And I want you to see what I'm doing here. This is a, a, a little, um, this is a little microcube from Roland here. It's $135, takes six batteries. And this is a million wires from Radio Shack. <laughs> All right, so this is trailer park cool. Now I can throw, a, I can make 20 cables and throw them to kids fast and I can have a band really quick. I can strap this to your son's belt. He can go out to the middle of the football field with batteries and start a band. I mean, that's kind of cool, right? So anyway, I'm going to get you. Go ahead and just warm up a little bit on that while I get my girls. Girls, come on down, Tweetwood Mac. Give it up for my girls. Mm-hmm. How we doing? Good. Yeah, that's the stuff. I love it when someone comes up who've never done this before, especially to get your band teachers, because they get it. Takes them a second. They hate it for a second. Then they go, yeah, I start to feel this. Go ahead and see if it'll make some noise. How long have you been playing bass on the ion guitar? Uh, 30 minutes. 30, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
That's what I love. Teachers take a chance in front of other teachers. No less. All right, we're going to do a little blues riff and E. Watch me for the changes and try to keep up. I'm going to do a little lead in, a little old time. thing in for a landing. I take, um, give it up for my band one more time. Take a bow, you guys. You want to take this with you? Woo I'm looking at the clock. What am I over? I'm a little bit over, right? So I'm just going to bring it in for my, this is my closer. This is my closer, my closer right here. So this was my son when he was little, but I look like this too. I was running through the house when I was a little kid and I had a pair of tweezers. They got two prongs. I saw these things on the wall. It explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> My mom saw the whole thing play out from the door, but she couldn't get there fast enough, so she ran in and kicked me with love. She's like, no! It's good. <laughs> My fingers are black, the wall is black, my diaper's full. <laughs> uh, I didn't think about that for years till I got a little older, a little wiser, and a little boy. He's a honeycut. <laughs> he needs me to be there. He needs me to understand. Whether I'm comfortable or not, they need us. You're here. I honor that. You're spending heartbeats getting ready for them kids. That's beautiful. Absolutely. I love you guys, man. Thanks for being nice. See you.